Okay, so in this review session, we are going to look at A2 uh, medical physics. Okay, so uh, let's see. Let's organize things slightly differently this time. I am going to tell you, or I'm going to run through, what are the three, there are three types of medical imaging. So the whole idea of medical physics, right, is that we want to look into the human body without cutting open the, open the human body because that is uh, not preferred. Okay, so we want to like be able to, let's say you have a fracture <clears throat> or you have an injury and then I just want to see what's going on inside your body. I cannot create a new injury by cutting you open if I can avoid it. So there are three types of medical imaging. They use, excuse me, very different <coughs> processes. The first one is uh, MRI, medical resonant imaging. <coughs> this one is calculation only, you know, calculation, sorry, assay only. So if you watch the video, uh, that we recorded, we explained the essay. Um, that's it. Lah. If they ask you to explain, the MRI is always essay and explain only. Okay. The second one is ultrasound. So this one, there are essays and then there's calculation. <clears throat> and the third one is x-ray. X-rays has explanation, not really an essay. Explain the continuous spectrum, explain, explain, cut off wavelength. I'll go through them with you one by one later. Explain and calculate. Then there is CT scan, which is also a type of X-ray. So for CT scans, there is another essay here. Okay. And there's some form of voxel calculation that we will go through today. And this ultrasound um, and x-ray calculation is around attenuation. Ultrasound is attenuation <coughs> and reflection. Okay, this calculation is only attenuation. Okay, in order of popularity, ultrasound is the most popular because it's a standalone topic in the syllabus. So you have to think about the perspective of setting past year paper. Lah. When we set a paper, we want to be able to cover as much as many chapters as possible. So this is chapter 14 and chapter 14 alone. So sometimes they, and most of the time, they will ask a lot of ultrasound. X-ray is embedded or is one of the subtopic in chapter 25. This is chapter 25. This is chapter 14. Okay, so being one of the chapters in X-ray, in uh, quantum, if let's say they ask photoelectric effect, if you were here yesterday, they ask photoelectric effect or they ask De Broglie wavelength or they ask something else, um, then they may not ask X-ray already. Okay, but it is still somewhat popular, so I'll give this a two star. MRI is the least popular one. And also, if it comes out right, it means it's essay. So it's either you know what to write or you don't know what to write. It's not like you can calculate, you can look at the equation, you can figure out what to substitute in. It's kind of it's kind of a meh, meh thing. Huh? So I don't know, these three things. So um, we are going to go through them. Okay. And the whole point here is for you to understand that medical physics, we are only expecting one question. <coughs> this is chapter 22, subtopic. Okay. We are only expecting uh, one question. So I think anywhere between... For today's afternoon's work, anywhere between eight marks to ten marks, so it's not a lot of, not a lot of questions. Can be less than eight. Six marks is also possible. All right, and then I will go through the twenty twenty and the nineteen version, and then we can see what comes out We can do an analysis. Then you can do a guess. Which one do you think will come out? If let's say you want to spot, ah yeah, don't spot lah. If got time, you kind of still have time. Study everything. Right, we're going to start off with the first one, with the list of essays that you need to know. So we're going to study this as if we are studying bio, okay? So the first essay that we need to know is regarding the MRI, Magnetic Resonant Imaging. So we are trying to help you here 
or the physicist is trying to help you here by giving you names that is directly related to what is happening. So just by the name itself, you can see that it has to do with magnets and there's some form of resonance that is happening. So I'm going to show you a past year question from winter 19. Anyway, if you hear lightning, you hear thunder, it's raining again. Okay, hang on. Let me go and dig out the question. Oh, and I think this was the last time it came out. So the last hit for this is ON19. You decide lah. I don't know. I can't tell the future. If you have a hunch, you let me know. Or you decide based on your hunch lah. Okay, so this is uh, ON19. Is this ON19? Wow, ON19 is very anomalous. Okay, later I will do analysis and then you will see why. We will have to do some speed run across the past year to see the popularity of each one. My guess is normally just based on instinct, meaning I guess based on my experience of compiling past years. Lah. Okay, so this is ON19, paper 4.1. Okay, so these are sample essays. Your MRI, the uses of a large and non, large constant magnetic field and a large, sorry, and a non-uniform magnetic field. And the other one, let me pull out the notes. I need to pull out my notes. This is magnetic field. And the other type one is in so ON nineteen and May June nineteen. Both this is paper for one. This one is also paper for one. Four one and four three. Okay, don't guess based on Varayana. They are very random one. CIE is not known to be consistent in the Varayans, so there is no detectable pattern, which is good. If not, students will start to have some weird, weird. Uh, let's guess this and guess that. And then things will not turn out well. Okay, and then they ask the same thing, you know, for two years in a row. The second type of essay for MRI is the complete explanation of principles. So example for this will be from winter 16. Okay, this review session is going to be very exam-based, meaning what's going to come out? And what do you think will come out this time? But yes, all of this is still in the new syllabus. So they probably may or may not ask or will ask according to normal trends. Okay, so for a total of eight marks, GG. Explain the main principles behind the use of MRI to obtain diagnostic information about internal body structures. So I don't know <clears throat> what kind of person you are, but if you are a very visual person, then the notes that we have, or the colorful, colorful one, is it really sufficient to study. Okay. So here, when we talk about MRI, it's called magnetic resonance imaging because we are going to resonate the hydrogen particle. So here we went through a step-by-step -step process to explain what is precession. So precession here is when, you know, you have your hydrogen nuclei and then they will spin around. Okay. And because they are spinning around, they behave like tiny magnets because the hydrogen nuclei has charge. Ma. So when the charge is spinning around, it creates a magnetic field. See, this blue color loop is current. So the arrow is magnetic field. You can use the right-hand grip rule. 
So the nuclei will be behave like small magnet. So if I put a large uniform magnetic field, they will line up parallel along the field. Okay. And the nuclei will rotate at the direction of the magnetic field. And this rotation is known as precession. So you need to be able to use the right terms. Again, this is like bio. Law. So the whole idea here is that there is a nuclear spin. If you put a magnetic field, it will spin around this like a cone. Okay, so it's going to it's going to spin like a cone around this. So it was obviously spinning at its own frequency. Okay, so this own frequency, the angular frequency of a point, uh, will rotate. This is called the Lamor frequency. Okay, 2 pi f is going to rotate here. Okay, and when we use very strong magnetic field, I can make sure the rotation is very fast, about 40 megahertz. Number three. Now we manage to arrange the nucleus, and then they are going to rotate at a certain frequency. Where is the resonance? Okay, so to create resonance, we are going to send a pulse of radio frequency or an EM wave. So if you want to resonate, if you remember yesterday's review session, we talked about resonance where the uh, force frequency is equal to the natural frequency. So this is the force frequency. If it's the same as the Lamor frequency, the natural frequency, then this hydrogen nuclei will resonate. Omega is the same. So resonance will cause the photons to absorb energy and go into a higher energy state. That is resonance, ma, large amplitude. Okay. So this is when there's no magnetic field. They spin however they want to spin. This is called magnetic field. We make them spin in one direction. And if we send radio frequency, this orange one is radio frequency. Ah, that's why I send this to this one. This one will flip into higher energy. Higher energy is parallel to B. Okay, so will you stay high forever? Sorry, uh, no. MCKL do not condone you take drugs, but generally you can't stay high forever. I can drink coffee, but I can't stay high forever. So it's going to go from high energy. So when we send radio frequency pulse, this one will bloop, go into high energy, but it can't stay high forever, so it will relax back into low energy state. So we are sending pulses of radio frequency wave. So it's just a blast and then nothing. It will go up, it will go down. And then we send another blast, go up, go down. Send another blast, go up, go down. So during this relaxation time, depending on where the hydrogen nuclei is, it could be in your muscle cell, it could be in your fat cell, your blood, it will have a different relaxation time. So the different relaxation time depends on the molecule. And then we have a detector to detect. Because during relaxation time, it will release out radio wave. So before the next pulse of radio frequency wave, most of the protons will flip back to lower energy state. We relax, no? cannot stay high forever, need to relax. Ma. So during this, radio frequency will be emitted by the nuclei. The time interval between the end of this pulse, so let's say I send out this pulse, there's no more radio frequency, I start my timer. This one get excited, stay here for a while, de-excites or relaxes. During the relaxation process, it will send out the radio frequency. I stop the stopwatch. Okay, so that is the time interval between the end of the incident radio frequency pulse and the emitted radio frequency pulse is called the relaxation time. And this emitted radio frequency pulse is detected and processed inside the computer. So then we can tell based on how quickly they flip and flip that the nature of the tissue. So here we can see relaxation time for different stuff. Like water has a very slow relaxation time because water got a lot of hydrogen bond. Okay. Ice is even harder because of the lattice structure. I also don't know why you have ice in your body. That is a bit concerning. <laughs> Unless you're Olaf. Gray matter is brain, so you can see they have different, different relaxation time. Lah. Okay. So the whole idea is we are in high energy here. And it will slowly relax. We will measure the time interval. Okay. So these pictures are for people, for you to recall when you write out that essay. So how do we use all of this together? We put this together and we write the eight mark essay. So first we need the 
hydrogen nuclei to pi queue up please okay so to queue up to queue the hydrogen particles i'm going to put the patient in a scanner between the poles of two very strong magnets this strong magnetic field causes the hydrogen nuclei to queue up but you cannot use the word queue up or stand in line because that is not the scientific word so in your brain you are thinking about this aligning but the hand must write the term precess if you're good in english funeral precession so when you watch people uh, have funeral down the road uh, the relative in their white or black clothing will queue up in a row and walk behind the casket right precession oops my mic there there so precession so this one means that the hydrogen nuclide will align itself precession and then that precession also has a certain rotation so with frequency in the radio frequency range this is known as Lamour frequency so now the whole entire body the whole body from the crown from the tip of your head to the bottom of your feet all the hydrogen nuclide in your body is already precessing but let's say I just want to scan your brain now because TBH, scan your whole body will take forever. So maybe you have a headache for two months, it didn't go away, I want to scan your head. So I want to see only one part of the body. I put the second magnetic field. A non-uniform magnetic field is applied across the patient. Okay, so this slightly different magnetic field in the brain area will signal to the detector that, hey, ignore the background magnetic field just detect the non-uniform magnetic field so right now there are two sounds that you can hear one is the rain and the occasional thunder that your brain has learned to filter out because that is not relevant information this large magnetic field is not relevant for relaxation it is there just so that your hydrogen can precess once it is precessed the job is done what you want is the non-uniform magnetic field. What you want to hear in this recording or in this session is my voice, which is non-uniform. Sometimes I talk, sometimes I don't talk. So this is a secondary field, okay? And we are going to put it at the part of the body that we want to look at. If you have a headache, I scan your, your stomach, man. It doesn't make sense, right? Okay? So radio frequency pulse is applied at Lamour frequency, causing resonance. On relaxation, a nuclei will emit radio frequency pulse. And since the Lamour frequency depends on the strength of the magnetic field, it will be different in different parts of the body because the magnetic field in your head, thanks to the non-uniform magnetic field, is a bit different. So when we put the non-uniform magnetic field at different position, okay, different position of a nuclei can be located. And these signals are detected, processed, and displayed by slices. So if you study biology, right, you know when we put our sample, we want to be able to slice them to see at different angle. Okay, you can watch the video that we recorded. We show you our examples of slices. And non-uniform magnetic field allows location of detection to be changed. And we can slice the organ differently. Okay, let's see if there's any pictures here. This is one slice of the brain. We cut right in the middle. All right, so the essay questions that you need to know is here they're all here already inside your notes so you study la okay i'm just gonna roughly so we have a large constant magnetic field because we want the nuclei to precess in the direction of the large magnetic field you must have the word precess precess okay about the direction of the large magnetic field frequency of the precession is in the radio frequency range three mark okay that is the so this is the hello hydrogen nuclei in the human body please queue up we are going to scan the human queue up now so the alignment is called precession and it's due to the large constant magnetic field the second magnetic field is a non-uniform field so this is to locate the position of the precessing nuclei everybody queue up but this cluster or this group of hydrogen you all align yourself slightly differently because there is a secondary non-uniform magnetic field. Okay, And then this is used to change the region where the nuclei is detected and it changes the frequency of precession slightly. 
So it creates a signature for us to detect. Right. Okay, carrying on. So you can see the mask scheme, anyone you can write can already. Lah. The frequency of precision, the precession depends on the field strength. It is used to locate and find position of spinning nuclei. So I want to be able to only locate the spinning nuclei in the brain or in the organ that I want to scan. Also changes the region where the nuclei is detected. Lah. Maybe uh, the doctor wants to scan the brain and the brain stem and the upper spinal column. Okay, no? So we will move the non-uniform magnetic field downwards. Okay, so this is one essay question. It came out in ON19 and May, June 19. Okay, this one is not very popular, but it came out a few times before. So this is just a replay, play by play of what I've mentioned just now. Main principles behind the use of MRI to obtain diagnostic information. So we need to talk about first, so normally I, I when I'm a student, or the way to remember all this is for me to draw picture one. So I got large magnetic field, but my picture is not as nice as some Miss Ellie's picture or maybe your even your drawing because I am not an artist, as my student will know. So the large magnetic field will cause this one to precess in this direction and then got some in opposite direction one. So this is step one. I need large magnetic field to cause precession. So patient is placed between the poles of a strong uniform magnetic field. Hydrogen nuclei in the patient will precess about the direction of this magnetic field. Okay, done. Two marks. Now I need to put a non-uniform magnetic field. Okay. So non-uniform magnetic field, maybe I put something like this. This is smaller, but it's non-uniform. So the non-uniform magnetic field, right, will allow me to detect certain parts of the human body. So let's say, let's say this is the human body here. And I want to scan, no, oh no, this one you see here. They have X, Y, Z magnetic coil. These are all the non-uniform field. So maybe the X, the X direction one will send a non-uniform magnetic field in this direction. So I can decide uh, whether I want to scan near the shoulder, near the clavicle, this bone here, the clavicle, in the middle of the chest, at the side, near the heart. I need to know where to scan. Uh. Y axis would be, do I want to scan vertically? And Z axis would be how deep the scan is. So all of this from top to bottom, left to right, head to toe, all this, you, we will allow us to detect because we only want to scan a specific part in the body, not the whole body. It will take forever for the computer to process. The GPU will burn, okay? Graphic processing unit. So we put a non-uniform magnetic field to allow different position of the nuclei to be detected and different slices to be studied. So talk about the magnetic field. So large magnetic field, number one. Precession, number two. Non-uniform magnetic field, number three. And the reason why we have this non-uniform magnetic field is to detect different position of hydrogen nuclei. Okay, next, it's time to send in some radio frequency. Ding, 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 ding. Radio frequency pulse. The word pulse is important. Huh? If we keep sending continuous radio frequency, the machine will be confusion because it's flooded. Okay, so this is radio frequency pulse. And this pulse is the same as the frequency of precession. These two will have the same frequency. The Lamo frequency. Okay, so this is number four. Radio frequency pulse is applied to all your precessing nuclei. Okay, such that they resonate. So the radio fre frequency pulse causes resonance. So I map this out in my brain or I sketch it beside the question and then I pluck it back into essay in full sentences. Okay, causing the hydrogen nuclei to resonate and absorb energy into a higher energy state. That is resonance. Ma. You have more energy, you go to higher energy state. But you can't stay high forever. So this resonance will then relax, right? So the hydrogen nuclei 
Look, our main corrector, our main corrector is our hydrogen nuclei. From first point to the fifth point, we are talking about the hydrogen nuclei. So after that, the hydrogen nuclei will go into relaxation. Okay, and then in relaxation, it will emit back the radio frequency pulse. So the RF pulse will come out again. So first it's absorbed, now it is released. This thing is detected and processed by the computer. You can draw a better flow chart. Drawing flow charts will help you memorize these eight points. That's my comment. Oh, you hope it doesn't come out. Because last time it came out in 2016. So for years and years, students have been studying this. It never come out. Yeah, I think last time it came out in 2016. Okay, so this is the MRI. All essay. So the only previous form of essays are either this or this. Why you use a large magnetic field, why a non magnetic field. I guess they could also ask, uh, explain the purpose of the radio frequency pulse. With this one would be to cause the hydrogen nuclide to resonate and absorb energy into a higher energy state. They can ask different parts of this, but if you understand this, breaking it down should be okay. All right, that will be the first medical imaging. I'm going to leave this here as empty space. So you can write as practice. You need to practice, okay? I don't need to practice. You do. All right. Ultrasound. Okay. Ultrasound is more popular because it's a standalone chapter. All right. So idea number two is ultrasound. But the thing about ultrasound is that uh, because it's standalone and they tend to ask, it's a bit over asked. So the questions are quite repetitive one. Let's talk about the essays first. What essays do you need to know? Number one, generation, like how to generate ultrasound. Ultrasound is sound with high frequency. Number two, detecting ultrasound. How do we detect ultrasound? So for this kind of explanation, right, your explanation will focus on the piezo piezo electric crystal. This is a very special crystal where vibration can cause uh, alternating current. The videos we have uh, gone through many, many uh, examples to explain to you what is happening. So another example that you can talk about is the lighter. Miss Ellie pulled out her electric guitar to show you the piezo electric crystal inside the electric guitar. So hopefully that made an impression to you. Sound is vibration, guys. Right now I'm talking. I'm just vibrating the air particle around my mic. So this one can go two ways. Lah. So if you want to generate ultrasound, you use alternating current. Uh, past year tend to use potential difference. So I guess I'm just going to stick to what I see in the mark scheme. Use alternating potential difference to generate ultrasound. Or if let's say the ultrasound reflects and come back, this one is used to detect ultrasound. And all this will happen in a transducer. Okay. So when was the last time they asked uh, questions regarding this? Let me think. I think fairly recent. Fairly recent. The last time detection came out was May, June 20, paper 4-2. Okay. I'm just going to zoom in and crop the question. So explain the detection. Generating ultrasound is... Also common and a bit more common than detection. Okay, let me put this. 
keep scrolling. Dun, 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 dun. There we go. Okay, so detecting ultrasound is here. Generating ultrasound, the last time it came out is ON17 paper 42. Okay, so detecting, let me push down, generating. Actually, this one is both generating and detecting. Yeah. There we go. So there's generating detection. You see all these lines? This one is just detection. Don't talk about generation. And the third type of essay is where they ask you, how do we use this for medical diagnosis? So the essays will look slightly different. Using ultrasound. For medical, medical, do they call this medical diagnosis? Yeah, medical diagnosis. Basically, we want to have diagnostic information. We want to see the baby, whether the baby is okay or not. Why does this keep dropping? Clem and boss is not tight enough. So we want to see whether the Baby is healthy. We can hear the heart rate, all that. So this one, we need to talk about what happens. We still need to talk about the crystal. And we also need to talk about what happens inside the body. And there are two things that happens here. There is reflection. There is attenuation. This green part is involved in calculation. All right. So I'm going to go through the essay on the points that you have to write very quickly. So for this, uh, explaining the detection and generation of ultrasound. My recommendation when you're studying to essay, right, is to have them at hand, handy. You write down somewhere or you print out, I, whichever works for you. And I will study this right outside the exam hall. And then I, when I get the paper, immediately I'll open the paper because this is memory work. Ma. Open the paper and I find the question and I just write everything down and then I can remove it from my brain. Then I can focus on complicated questions that I need to think. That's my strategy. La. What's yours? What is your strategy? Because I ain't gonna... Oh, hang on. I ain't gonna do it be able to remember if I study it at this point and hold it in my brain until 11. 11? Is that your paper? No. Yeah, 11. Huh? Every day before I sleep, I open and stare at it. Lo. Every day before. Okay. Anyway, the recent one is just generating. I'll do one for generation and one for detection now. Okay. This one is from ON17, paper 42. Principles behind generation of ultrasound. Gotta make this bigger. Give me a sec. So for five marks, start with the crystal in the transducer. You write crystal and transducer, you got marks already. Because it shows that you kind of study, sort of, but not really. Okay, so we're going to start off by saying that a transducer with a piezo, 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 electric crystal is you. When alternating potential difference 
must use the word alternating. Uh. Oh, grammar. When an alternating potential difference is supplied across the crystal. The crystal is distorted or change shape and vibrates. Okay, just like how when I'm talking to you right now, my voice box will distort and vibrate. Let's give it a nice highlight. All right, next point. What's the next point? We are going to think about the alternating frequency. So if the alternating potential difference has the same frequency, because alternating current has frequency, ma, as the natural frequency of the crystal. Piezoelectric crystal resonates. Okay. Finally, natural frequency of the crystal should be in ultrasound, which is large frequency, okay? Ultrasound range. That's it. We're done. Uh, this thing is five marks, right? So if you mention piezo electric crystal and transducer, so we need piezo electric crystal and we need transducer. This is one mark. Okay. You say that we apply alternating PD. Alternating is compulsory, uh, not any PD. If you don't apply alternating PD, there's no vibration. It's just you stretch the crystal or you compress the crystal and that's it. Then you mentioned that the crystal distort one mark. Okay. Alternating PD causing vibration is another mark. So if you put PD and distortion, they give you, uh, okay, la, you got some of half of the idea, right? They'll give you one of this mark out of two. All right. Next. Alternating PD has the same frequency as the natural frequency. So same frequency as natural frequency. The crystal will resonate. Okay. One mark. One, two, three, four, five. Natural frequency should be in the ultrasound range. Okay. So this essay is worth five marks. All right. So this kind of thing, you know, you know, no, you don't know, then it's going to be empty already. So I make sure that I have this in my head. I understand what is a piezoelectric crystal. If I want to, I can go and look at my notes, find a diagram to draw so that I can recall this. Okay, we're going to move on to the next one where we are asked to detect ultrasound, right? So if we are going to detect ultrasound, right now we are trying to... Uh, talk about what happens when the ultrasound enters the body and comes back to you. So let's say this is your stomach and then your baby is here. I'm not good at drawing. But I want to know ultrasound come, come, come. Okay, hit the baby's skull and then reflect. Okay, my transducer is here. This is my, my ultrasound one. The one looks something like this one. Of course, the transducer is on the skin. Okay, hang on. Let me draw the belly properly. Mm. Very pregnant mother. Nah. Okay, this is the transducer. This is the baby inside the belly, stomach. I'm going to lose in charades. Okay, so we want to talk about detection. Here to here. We want to detect this one. Okay. So, to explain the principles of detection, we still need to talk about the ultrasound. So we will say pulses of ultrasound is sent into the human body. Doesn't have to be like for babies or 
basically it doesn't have to be the stomach like it can ultrasound different parts like your heart anyway so pulses of ultrasound is sent into the human body and then what we do is the ultrasound acted along the boundaries we call these boundaries which is like for example the boundary between the uh, water the amniotic fluid and the baby's face okay along the boundaries and is incident on the transducer quartz crystal or piezoelectric crystal which also acts as a detector so the ultrasound one or known as the ultrasound transducer is creates and detects ultrasound it is the same one so the ultrasound is reflected along the boundaries when the reflected ultrasound is incident this part here it will reach the transducer ding 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 so here is where you incident on the transducer inside transducer got quartz crystal ah, quartz crystal inside here okay next this incident ultrasound vibrates quartz crystal okay or oscillate and the oscillating or vibrating quartz crystal generates an alternating potential difference across the crystal this difference is detected and detect potential difference using circuit you know that so this is done we can detect the ultrasound so the whole idea is that the ultrasound will touch the crystal make the crystal vibrate because ultrasound is still vibration when the crystal vibrate it makes its potential difference we detect that potential difference that's how we know there's ultrasound if there's no ultrasound to vibrate the crystal there's no potential difference to detect okay so there are no keywords meaning we should see the main ideas here pulses of ultrasound is sent into the human body when it is reflected along the boundaries it will eventually reach the transducer quartz crystal here which is also a detector the incident ultrasound will vibrate the quartz crystal and that same quartz crystal will generate an alternating potential difference which we can detect four marks one mark each the main idea la. Anyway, so we're going to put it together because now we're going to use the ultrasound and look into the human body so the last time this thing came out is fat march 20. it's been a while actually the essay for ultrasound not the calculation but the essay i i don't know again i cannot tell the future so i'm not going to predict anything i'll just tell you what i know Okay, so we are going to now explain the main principles of use of ultrasound to obtain. So we're just almost repeating ourselves. But just a note, right? You notice that the essays are not identical. If you want to generate ultrasound, you apply potential difference. And we talk about how the potential difference create ultrasound. So the potential difference have the same frequency as the natural frequency, and then there's resonance. If we detect, we talk about what happens when the ultrasound come back. There is reflection along the boundary. We send the ultrasound into the body, and then this ultrasound will vibrate the crystal and create potential difference. All right. Here, we put together. Law. So we're going to start off with the pulses. Actually, can copy. Uh, no, man, I type again. I'll type again. Okay. Of ultrasound. Must be pulses. Uh, is sent into the human body. Okay. 
the second point, the ultrasound is reflected at the boundaries between media. Media here is just a sciencey way to say different types of cell tissues. Lah. Okay, so uh, how much is reflected depends on whether it's skin and tissue. Okay, let me go and dig out a table for you to stare at if you need it. Just to remember this point. Dun, 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 dun. Finding, finding. Ah, there we go. This one. So this one tells you how much it will reflect between the media. Because sound will travel at different speed in blood, in bone, in fat, in muscle. So because they travel at different speed, the reflection behavior is different. So the ultrasound is reflected at the boundaries between the media. Okay, and the reflected ultrasound is detected by the transducer. So, transducer both ultrasound detector and generator. Same one. These are the compulsory marks. So you don't write this, you will lose marks. Lah. Then the rest is just you. There are more marks than six marks. You can score more than six in this question. But we can score you at most six marks. Okay. So let's talk about the reflected ultrasound. The reflected ultrasound. Intensity. So how much energy is left depends if information about the nature of the boundary. So it tells us whether it's air or blood or bone or fat or muscle. Okay. Besides the intensity, we need to say the time interval. So the time delay or the time interval between transmission and receive, receive, receive retrieval detection of ultrasound give information about the depth of the boundary. The further away the baby is from the skin of the stomach, the longer it will take for the ultrasound to come back out reflection-wise. Okay, So time delay will give depth information about the depth. Intensity, how much of it is reflected across the face, will give us information about what type of boundary it is, whether it's bone, ah, muscle, ah, tissue. Ah, okay, And then you can also say that the... Also, it also depends on the attenuation, right? So this reflector gives information about the nature of the boundary. You can think about this in the form of attenuation and reflection. Okay, we will do calculation regarding this after this last essay. Okay, and you could also say that the degree of reflection is on the acoustic impedance impedances of the two medias or tissue at the boundary. When we say media, we just mean this one. Uh, this, because it's the medium that the sound wave is traveling in. Uh, so we call it media law. Okay, what else can we write? We can use the gel. Gel is used to minimize reflection at the skin. 
or maximize transmission into the skin. Finally, reflected ultrasound is detected, processed, and displayed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Out of eight, you can get up to six. But the first three one is compulsory. The last five one, any, any five will work. Okay? So always think about describing the reflected ultrasound. The whole point of doing ultrasound imaging is there are certain property of the reflection that we can study. And through that study, we can tell whether uh, this one... This ultrasound is going through tissue, our bone, our blood, our fat, our muscle. About six marks. Three essays for ultrasound. Ding, ding, ding. And let me see. Two essays that I leave to you because it's the same as the notes one in MRI. Not very popular. We're going to now move on to ultrasound and calculation, which uh, is much preferred according to my students. I don't know. Look, this memory work one, right? You remember, oh, then you can almost get full marks quite easily. Okay. So, where are we now? This is uh, number two, ultrasound essays. Okay, so now we are going to look at ultrasound. Ultrasound attenuation and reflection. As usual, I will give you a list of equations that you need to know. Number one, what is the attenuation equation? Equation. We will see this attenuation equation later at our last medical imaging, which is MRI. But the attenuation equation here is I is equal to I naught E negative mu X. Okay. I have explained before in the lecture notes how you can fashion out this equation from the list of the question, I mean, from the list of equation that is given to you. So if you flip to the very first page of your question paper, you are given this equation, which is the general exponent format. Of course, we're not talking about radioactive decay. If you were here yesterday, this is not radioactive decay. So we're going to focus on this one. Okay, so I'm going to delete this okay and only crop this thing time to do some math okay. so whenever you have this right this is x as a function of t so this is your variable this is your variable this is i as a function of t sorry i as a function of x so this is your variable this is your variable. So we don't touch these two. We are going to put some values inside to find them. X0 is a constant. Lambda is a constant. So this two is constant. I0 is the initial condition. Just like for radioactivity, this is the same thing. Initial activity or initial number of nuclei. This mu0 is a constant that is related to the propagation of the sound wave. So let's say I have a media here. I don't know. It can be a sponge. It can be a block of polymer. And then I send in sound wave at an intensity of I naught. The energy will be dispersed into the medium. Why? Because again, sound wave is vibration. It will vibrate all the particles inside here. And if it's vacuum, then sound wave cannot travel at all. Okay? So it will release as heat. So ultrasound can be used to heat up stuff one. Especially if you have a sports injury, can use to heat up your muscle. So for this one, it will disperse, disperse energy. So by the time it come out, only got I left. Okay? So this is your first variable. This is I. How much intensity is left? After we travel a distance of x, so after we pass through a distance of x, how much energy is left? Uh? 
Ooh, okay, so the, the graph will look something like this, which will look a lot like the attenuation, attenuation for that, the radioactivity graph that we talked about yesterday. Yeah, like that one. Decrease this way. Okay, it's an exponential decrease. But seldom you will see the graph. Lah. They just want you to use the equation. Okay, so this is I, and here is I naught. Okay, so this is your X. The thickness is X. So you substitute inside. Lah. This mu is depend on the type of medium. So the mu inside your bone will not be the same as the mu inside your muscle, will not be the same as inside your tissue. And here is a handy data. Testing. Got sound? Ah? Mic test. Hang on. Let me check the sound. Okay. Oh, yeah. The mic is not always working. Very sad. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. How long was I? Was there no sound? Roughly. Estimate the no sound period. Okay, so I repeat again. Nah. So what you need to know regarding attenuation is the equation because it's not given to you. I is I naught E negative mu X. You can use this to help you recall the equation by substituting I with X. X with I. Okay, and the constant now is mu. This constant is the linear absorption or linear attenuation coefficient. And in different medium, you will have different uh, different types of absorption. No? Certain tissues or certain medium will absorb sound wave easier than others. Okay, So as you travel, the intensity will drop. That's why when we measure the different intensity, we can tell this one. Reflected ultrasound intensity will give information about the nature of the boundary. Different boundary, different tissue. Show the boundary oh, yeah. and media. Different boundary, different tissue will absorb differently. Okay, so the second thing that happens to the ultrasound, besides having its, its intensity decrease because it travels into the body, is that it will undergo reflection. Okay, so the ultrasound is reflected. So we have this thing called the alpha or the reflective coefficient, so to speak, the intensity reflection coefficient. So I'm just going to steal this from the notes. Most of the time, they will give you the value or the equation of alpha, which is this. Okay, this is the equation for alpha. Most of the time. But there were some times where they didn't give you. So if they didn't give you, then I'm sorry, la, you're expected to know. So it is the difference between Z values. So if you want to know what Z value is, you should be able to define that Z is the specific acoustic impedance 
which is just now the list of tables I showed you long, in the diagram. So this calculation, two things will happen to your ultrasound. The first one is that your ultrasound will attenuate or lose intensity to surrounding. The second one would be not all the ultrasound will go into the body. Some of it will be reflected. And then it will be reflected at a certain ratio, IR over I, depending on the value of Z. Okay, so the value of Z of different things are given here. Specific acoustic impedances, which is the product of the density of the medium multiplied by the speed of sound. So you can see if the speed is fast, then the Z value is very big. If the speed is slow, like air, the Z value is very small. Okay. So the reason why we care about the Z value is because we want the ultrasound to go into the body. Because when the ultrasound goes into the body, then only we can see the see into the structure, right? Because we need to look at the, the human body. So if Z1 is more or less equal to Z2, alpha is zero, means there is no reflection at the boundary. This is good. This is ideal for diagnostic. You want to look inside the human body. But the ultrasound doesn't go into the human body. Then you see what? What you see? You see nothing. Okay? This one is not good. And normally, they will ask you to comment. Comment. Why? Gel is used. Why you use gel for ultrasound? Okay, so that the Z1 and Z2 is similar. The Z1 for gel is more or less the same as the Z for tissue. So this is why we use gel. And normally this kind of calculation is about 4 to 5 marks. I will show you the calculation now. Ta-da! Okay, again, this is in your notes. So the calculation that I'm talking about will look something like this. Uh. Where is it? Ding, ding, ding. To explain why we use gel, like this one. We have done this already, remember? Define specific acoustic impedance product. Product of density of medium rho and speed of sound in medium C because Z is equal to rho C. Two marks are, so you have to make sure that you mention this is the density of the medium and the speed of sound in the medium. So here is where they talk about Z1 is more or less equal to Z2. Z1 is bigger or Z1 is less than. Okay, so the differences will affect the intensity reflection coefficient, which is alpha. So, legit, you can just put in this answer here. Nah. Life is nice, right? Okay, so these are examples of questions they can ask you. Like, if alpha is more or less zero, there is little to no reflection at the boundary. If alpha is very different, then there's alpha is one. You need to mention that alpha is one uh, because they ask you to comment on alpha. Means that there's large, a lot of the ultrasound is reflected. Okay, so this is a so-called the comment on the use of gel. And let me show you other past year questions. Okay, let's see. Let's speed run. There we go. Explain the significance of the magnitudes of Z1 and Z2. Okay. So the only thing that I want to caution you is sometimes they talk about the transmitter, sometimes they talk about the reflected. If a lot is reflect, then not many is transmit. Is if a lot is transmitted, then not much is reflected. So if you want to top up on this one, uh little to no reflection, most ultrasound is transmitted. And then this one, uh, very little 
ultrasound is transmitted because they are all reflected away already. Ma. So be a bit careful and don't just blindly memorize these things. Okay, Look at the one. Do they want incident and transmitted? Or do they want incident and reflected? Okay, So they always talk about the difference between Z1 and Z2, intensity of incident to transmitted. Okay, so this one got asked many times already. La, and then sometimes they will ask you, now nah, use your value to explain why gel is applied. Why? Why we use gel? Okay, lo. so this is FM20 paper 4.2. You will have to find the alpha and then you have to comment why we use gel. So I will leave that to you to try. FM20 paper 4.2. Why gel? Why do we use gel? Mm. Other things that is similar, let me scroll through to find one that you can do is hmm. I don't think we recorded many examples because they are so repetitive. Good news, hopefully. Ah, okay, another one would be May, June 15, paper 42. Okay, so for this uh, question, right, if I show you the question, Okay, what is meant by specific acoustic impedance of a medium? It's the same thing, product of rho and C. Make sure you specify what is rho and C. They give you some Z value of different stuff, air, gel, soft tissue, and bone. Determine the wavelength of the ultrasound. Don't forget V equal to F lambda. So go try out this question. And then you see this one is now incident and reflected. Previous ones was incident and then transmitted. Okay, no? So, by making reference for data of air, gel, soft tissue, explain quantitatively, means use numbers, why during medical diagnosis, a gel is usually put on the skin. So, I will start off this question here, but you should complete it on your own as practice. This one is May, June 15. Paper for two. So I'm going to skip part A because A is repeated already. Ma. Now, product. Go from wavelength and this one. Ultrasound intensity. Okay, so now I'm focusing just on Z values. Okay, I haven't talked about attenuation yet or bring them together. So for this one, if you are a bit blur, to find wavelength when we have frequency means we can use V equal to F lambda. I need to find V. Z is equal to rho C, where this C is speed of sound. So I want bone. This is 7.0 times 10 to the power of 6 bone. Density of bone is this much. 1.7 times 10 to the power of 3. C. We can look for C. Though. 7. Da, da, da. Okay. Seven E6 divided by 1.7 E3. Speed of sound in bone is a staggering 117.6 meter per second. Okay, now to be expected because sound travels very fast in solid. Frequency 9.0 times 10 to the power of 5 lambda. We can look for lambda now divided by 9e5. So this one is 4.58 times 10 to the power negative 3. Or you could write 4.6 mm. They wanted this in mm. Okay, this is just calculation to make sure you don't get zero in the question. 
here is where they want to test you. So they are asking you to use air gel soft tissue. Let's put the table here. Ding. We are going to use air, gel, and soft tissue. And we have to calculate the ratio. So I think there are two options. We either use air and soft tissue. This is one. And then gel and soft tissue. This is two. Miss air and gel, do you want to use the skin. There's no skin in air and gel. So we must always involve the skin there. Skin, skin, skin. So first one. We say we do air and gel boundary. So IR over I is air and gel. Uh, substitute 4.3 times 10 to the power of 2 minus 1.5 times 10 to the power of 6 squared divided by 4.3 times 10 to the power of 2 plus 1.5 times 10 to the power of 6 squared. You will find that this is close to 1. Or you press calculator law. I know it's close to 1 because this thing is very big. Ma. This 1.5 times 10 to the power of 6 so this thing is almost negligible. So this is one. This one here, this one number here, shows you, okay, I write the conclusion, that most ultrasound is reflected because it's one, ma, the ratio is one. Most or all IR. So it doesn't go into the human body. This is not ideal because we want to look into the human body. So now we do gel. Do I use air and gel? Why do I use air and gel? Sorry, I should use air and soft tissue. Same thing. La. This one will be 1.6. Air and soft tissue boundary is still 1. Okay. So now gel and soft tissue. This is also why writing headers like this has been useful for scatterbrain people like me. I can get very scatterbrain, especially if I'm like, I do too many questions already. So my brain is a bit shut down. And then stupid mistake happened. That is when stupid mistake happens. So you must make sure you get a good sleep before the people. Don't be like me. Sleep at 4 a.m. No good. Okay, so gel and soft tissue. Lie, this one and this one. I see numbers that are very close to each other. So 1.6 minus 1.5 square. Miss the prefix leh? The prefix the same, ah, they cancel out, no need law. This one is very small. If you want to include the prefix, you can. You don't need to because they cancel out. This is 1 over 916, or 1.04 times 10 to the power of negative 3, which is more or less equal to 0, right? So this one is most ultrasound is transmitted into the body. So if most ultrasound is transmitted into the body, then... This is suitable for diagnostic, right? So we need to form a conclusion. This thing is four marks. I am guessing the calculation is one mark. Calculation is one mark. The conclusion is another mark. Okay. So I will then say, hence, a gel is used because it allows less to know reflection at the boundaries at the boundary most ultrasound is able to be transmitted into the body which is essentially what we want 
because if you cannot transmit the ultrasound, then what are you looking at? You are just looking at a human belly. Okay, lor, there's a human belly. Then nothing else to say. Cannot see inside the human body. Okay. So we need to see here. IR over I is one mark. So you need to calculate this one for M1. Meaning if you don't get this mark, you will not get the next mark, which is this almost all is reflected is A1. You could also say no transmission. Okay. Repeat again for gel and soft tissue. Something like this. I see the 1.04. I give one mark. M1. And then you say gel allow no reflection at the boundary or complete transmission. Complete transmission is one mark A1. So what we want is most or all of the ultrasound is transmitted into the body. That's why we use the gel. I write this extra sentence just to make the examiner happy. Okay, so this is your four marks. They give you equation already. You just need to know what to put inside. Okay. You just need to know the first one we will use air and soft tissue. Second one we will use gel and soft tissue. Because we want to scan the soft tissue. So this is the type of question that they can ask regarding reflection. What about attenuation? Let's see if there is attenuation question in the recent past years. Do -do -do. Uh, yes, there is one. Okay, so I'm going to move on to talk about the attenuation question in May, June 20. Paper 4.1. Okay, I'm not going to do 4A, because 4A is like just the same thing, okay? 4A is this one. By reference to ultrasound wave, explain for the nth time what is specific acoustic impedance. Skip, you do lah. Ultrasound wave is incident normally on the boundary. You have Z1, you have Z2. State how the ratio of the intensity IR over I depends on Z1 and Z2. Nay, we just calculated how IR over I depend on the relative magnitude of Z1 and Z2. This one, 10 to the power of 2, 10 to the power of 6. This one is Z1 is bigger than Z2. This one, 1 1.5 and 1.6. Z1 is more or less equal to Z2. You write lah, your own conclusion. Then you check the mark scheme to see whether you are okay. I am going to jump to B. So for B, we are looking for attenuation. So state what is meant by attenuation of ultrasound wave. So this is loss of wave power or ultrasound power. Or intensity. As it travels across a medium. So parallel beam of ultrasound is passing through a medium. You don't say. Incident I0 is reduced to 0.35 I0 passing through a thickness of 0.046. Fine mu. So this is I0. This is I. I is equal to I0 E negative mu x. So 0.35 I0 is equal to I0. Because we want 0.35 left, our I0 can go away. Negative mu 0.046. So I bring the E over. This will be ln 0.35 equal to negative mu 0.046. You can find mu. Lo. 
such a bonus question, guys. So it's not difficult if you know. In fact, I think these chapters are quite nice to do. No complicated. You will get 22.8. I guess you can put 23, but I'll just put 22.8. So this is a straightforward application of the attenuation question. Okay, moving on to another variant. Okay, I'm just showing you different questions, that's all. This one is from summer 20, April 4 2. This one, uh, I, uh, I already told you that they were asked principle of detection of ultrasound. So that one you can try out, we have already explained. And then why little transmission from ultrasound wave of air to skin? Again, we are saying that use Zach to explain why little transmission of ultrasound wave from air to skin. Use the Zach value here and here. And explain why there is little to no transmission. You explain lah. Look at this. Try to explain. So you can see that they are asking repeated stuff. It's good. No, I think it's good. Okay, what about winter 20? What did they ask in winter 20? Well, I miss every year also got lah. Because ultrasound is a standalone chapter have to ask almost every year. Is that a big enough hint? At least that's my observation. So if you really want to study one, the best uh, best bang for your buck or the best chance for it coming out, there's, there's no certainty that it must come out. CIE doesn't owe you anything. But it's, it will be this one. Ultrasound. Okay, so explain again generation of ultrasound. I'm not gonna do this, okay? I want to talk about the next part, which is the simulation. And sometimes attenuation can be in decibel. So if we are looking at attenuation in decibel, it is worth remembering that decibel here is 10 LG, the ratio of intensity. So this decibel here is for 10 LG something. 10 LG bracket ratio of something. Can be power, can be intensity, doesn't matter. Lah. So we want after passing through the air, Entering the air. Entering the air is I not. Passing through the air is I. Okay. This is mu. This is x. So we want the ratio in decibel to be 10 LG, big bracket, I over I not. But I also know I is equal to I not E negative mu x. So I over I naught is E negative mu x. So I will substitute this one as 10 log E negative mu x. Do I have mu? Yes, 1.2. This is 3.5 cm. Miss, no need to convert. No need. Per cm and cm, they cancel out. We have done this exercise for the attenuate, not the attenuation, the radioactivity equation. So now we just press calculator. Though. Okay. Hello. I want to make sure people don't press calculator wrongly. Because you reach this stage and then you press calculator wrongly. That is a great sadness. So let's press calculator together. Ding. Okay. Step by step, we settle the one inside the bracket first. Where is exponent? Inverse ln. So you shift ln. Nah, E. Okay. Negative 1.2 times 3.5. Okay, you cannot press everything together step by step. Lah. So this is the answer. You can write now or if I don't want to, I can continue 10 log 
Lock and loan is not the same thing. If you don't know what the difference are, go figure out. Come talk to your lecturers. Click answer because just now we already calculated. We want to 10 log this one. Ma. Equal. So the answer is negative 18.24. Because there's a decrease. Because I is less than I not, so you should get negative. So negative 18.2. You can leave the negative there. The negative here shows me that I is less than I not. Makes sense what? Passing through the layer of air have to have less intensity than entering the layer of air. Okay. Right. Four marks leh. I want to check and see whether I write all my working correctly. This equation is one mark. Okay. Uh, e negative 1.2 times 3.5 is one mark. They put 10 log something is one mark. And final answer is one mark. There must be a negative sign in the final answer. If not, you will get three out of four. Pretty cool. Very nice. Okay, let's look at the other variant. This is 4 1. Ah, I haven't opened 4 2 yet. Paper 4 2. Okay, so. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Ooh. Guys, there's no ultrasound in variant 4 2. ON20 paper for two. No ultrasound. What did they ask? X ray. Ha, huh, study so much didn't come out. Uh. Like that one, long. Medical physics is like that one. Okay, so we have done the attenuation. We have done the reflection. And I am not going to spend time to do the attenuation plus reflection one because I think the recording is good enough. And also, if you need to, this one will take a long time. Lah, okay, so these are examples of attenuation and reflection. This one that we recorded only have attenuation. No, it has reflection also. Okay, so go check out the recording. All this where we transmit and then we reflect one, I will list down for you. Go and look at the playlist and at least watch a few where we have attenuation plus reflection. Okay, so I've run you through the basics. It should be good enough. Watch or try. ON19, paper 4-2, question 5. These are all recorded already. Um... ON10, paper 4-2. Actually, this one I've just discussed, so not really needed. It's this one. ON14, paper 4-3. Question 11. So these two, we have attenuation plus reflection your alpha and your mu, your z value as well. Okay, so go and watch. They are already recorded. If you want to try some after the recording, let me see if there are any left for you to try. You can just try the rest. Lah. It's not a very thick stack of past year questions to begin with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think this is good enough. If you understand this, you are okay. Ready to go. All right, so we're done with ultrasound. Go and try, watch or try. It's already recorded. 
when we combine attenuation and reflection and how to deal with the ratio, because that would take a while to explain. So I think the recording is good enough. But watch that one. Moving on. Third and final would be X-ray and MRI, you know, with X-ray and CT scan. So I'm going to start with X-ray first. Okay. What you need to know about X-ray in a nutshell is the spectrum, the continuous X-ray wavelength drawing, which looks quite a lot like this one. Continuous X-ray spectrum here. So this is an example of how pass your question that they can ask you. And this thing is only six months. Okay. So the continuous X-ray spectrum, this was asked in winter 20, the ON20 without the ultrasound one. They asked this one, paper 4.2 explaining the spectrum. So things that we can ask you to explain is number one, continuous distribution. Why we have this continuous distribution? Number two, we will ask you to explain why there are narrow peaks at certain wavelengths or these characteristic wavelength lines. The peaks, number three, we can ask the cutoff wavelength. This point here. Why after this no X-ray one? Why? Uh, why after this no X-ray? So in the recording, we have already provided an explanation around this. Okay. Um, so the recording that you can watch and learn is the example video for May, June 16, paper 4.2. So go watch that video, make sure you understand, then try this from ON20, this one. Okay? So this is the video we already recorded already. It should also be in your notes. So this is also very uh, sciencey. Like we tell you facts, you just memorize facts, okay? And also, the whole idea of continuous distribution, sharp cutoff, why are they peaks, is here. And then what else do you need to know? The filter, filter one. This one came out in trials. But... Correct. Hang on. Huh? My one note is a bit finicky. Okay. Come out in trials. Explain the continuous X-ray spectrum. The second one is how to control hardness and intensity intensity of x-ray so we control hardness we want harder x-ray this one is larger frequency so to have larger frequency, I need to bombard the target metal at higher speed. So this one, we will increase the accelerating potential. There's accelerating and not potential. So the electron will bombard, hit the metal target at faster speed. We want to make bigger X-ray. Intensity, we want more X-ray photon. To have more X-ray photon, we will increase the anode filament current so that the anode will get hotter, creating more electrons. This one, we want more electrons. For harder, we want faster electron. Harder and faster. Okay, can intensity, how to adjust these two. And then the next part is, Based on this adjustment, how do we know whether the image got good contrast? 
So we need to know what is contrast. And then the other one is what are uh, sharpness, right? Because we want to create a nice X-ray image. Ma. Cannot just simply anyhow. If your X-ray image is not sharp, don't, don't have good contrast, then why did we put the patient through this suffering? It was not necessary. Okay, so we want contrast and sharpness. So you should go and either refer to your notes and know how the methods to create contrast and sharpness and sharp image. You should know what they are, how to define them, and what are the methods. So this one all is statement one. Nah. So these are the methods to adjust the contrast. And there are certain examples uh, of what kind of image you want to create. Okay, so if you're interested in all this, you can get a degree just in medical physics one. How to use physics to help medicine. Okay, next. Attenuation. Me so familiar, this equation. Yeah, la, we just use it what for ultrasound. It's the same idea. If ultrasound energy will decrease when you travel through a distance, X-ray intensity also will decrease because X-ray will ionize your cell. I send X-ray into your body, oh, the X-ray will take apart the electrons in your body, creating cell damage. Miss Kendaya, cannot lah unless you stand in front of the X-ray for many hours a day lah. But it is quite dangerous if you're an X-ray technician. So generally, if you have ever taken an X-ray, the person will say, stand here, don't move, and then they will walk out of the room and, pr and press, the, press the picture. Okay? Stand there, don't move. Okay. So, yeah, that's all. When you talk about this uh, attenuation, we are still using the same equation, so there's nothing new. And when it comes to X-ray attenuation, right, the equations are easier to deal with because you already know in ultrasound. So the X-ray attenuation equation is a very straightforward one. And generally, uh, we want good ratio so that we have good contrast. So the X-ray that passes through the muscle has a very high intensity because muscle doesn't absorb X-ray. The X-ray that passes through the bone has very low intensity. So because high intensity, low intensity, we can detect the difference. Bright, dark, um, I mean, bright and dark images or shading on your X-ray. So attenuation and contrast. So regarding this, you can watch and learn if you haven't yet. The recording ON15 paper 43 question 11. They should be in the playlist. Um, this is good enough. I mean, I recorded another one, but it's not very different than the previous one. You can do this too. And then after that, if you desire to do more X-ray questions, uh, I have sorted out the quantum This is from quantum chapter, right? So I've sorted out the quantum chapter by subtopic on its own in your handouts. So let me go and dig out my notes again. Ding, 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 ding. Very fact heavy, uh, this review session. A lot of things to memorize. Yeah, lo. So if I revise, or I will revise the medical physics, the last chapter. Because my brain, I have a memory of a potato. Don't know about you. Okay, try. Try three. La. FM20 paper 42 question 11. So it's fairly easy. This is about attenuation one. You can try May June 18 paper 41 question 12. This one is also about attenuation. And I think that's it. Not much already. Okay, this one is slightly anomalous. 
because it talk about the accelerating voltage and attenuation. So go try. This one is what? 80 kilo E volt of X-ray. Go try. Review the mark scheme. Learn that you can learn on your own. Okay. You are good enough and you are able to learn on your own if you put in some effort. So watch and learn this, then you go and try this. Three question. You can run. Okay, so that's X-ray. Not much. If you know the property of X-ray, this thing, and then you try this one, you're okay now. How to control hardness intensity. This one they like to ask, like a uh, calculate six marks and oh by the way, comment on the contrast. Oh by the way, the image is not sharp. What can we do? One mark, two mark. It's the by the way question. This this two. The bulk of it is calculation. So go and try. The last one for the day is CT scans. So in the recording, if you haven't watched the recording yet, uh, Miss Ellie and I, we boot up Minecraft just for fun, just to amuse ourselves. We Teacher also need amusement one, ma, right? So uh, what you need to know is two things. Essay. Explain the working principle of CT scan. And I hate to say this, but this is a cult favorite for some. I don't know why, but there are so many times. Uh, the last time they asked is ON19 paper for two, six marks. Okay, so I don't know which one will come out. Lah. One of the essays may come out. I have listed down all the essays that's in your syllabus. You will study them in your own time. Build your mind map, draw your flow chart, do what is needed. Okay, so that hopefully you will be able to write them during the exam. Okay. Anyway, this one. Let's go and look at the picture. Okay. So I will not be able to recreate this fast enough live. So there we go. This is the working principle. We're going to start off with this human inside the scanner. And then we put the x-ray here, we scan the human, we detect. Put the x-ray here, scan the human, we detect here. So we're going to put the scanner and the x-ray detector at different different angle and go scan detect scan detect scan detect scan detect and then we keep adding them together and then after that we need to do processing so if you haven't watched the video yet where we explain step by step you can watch tonight no? what happens okay so the whole idea is once we scan and add everything together and process, we can reproduce this image 1379 in the computer that was this 1379 inside the original tissue. That's the whole point of a CT scan. We build back up the image pixel by pixel, bit by bit. So if let's say you go and look at an image of Miss Lee right now, right? like this potato webcam, Okay, this camera is, let's say, uh, 720p, 720 pixels. So it's a construction of 720 boxes of my face that's going into the camera and is processed and transmitted and displayed into your device. So this is the processing that happens all the time. We use computer. Lah. So when you want to explain the working principle, this is the working principle, okay? So x-ray of a slice or a section through the patient is taken repeatedly at different angle. How we take it repeatedly at different angle? Rotating the x-ray source and the detector. Okay. A computer is used to combine. Remember, we scan, combine, scan, combine, and give 2D image of the slice. And we're going to repeat this for many, many slices to build up an X-ray image. Repeating this for many, many slices to build up an X-ray image. That is 3D. Uh, once it's 3D, like a holograph, oh, we can rotate, rotate. 
So you know the Iron Man, if you watch the MCU universe, oh, his, his holographic thing where he put his finger and then he pushed the things away, we have the technology, we have the CPU power, it's just that it's a lot of money. So let's say I want to build this thing and it takes like 30, 40 US, K USD, right? Who is going to buy it? Nobody's going to buy it. But you see, if let's say I can project image in many directions, uh, then I can build a 3D holograph. And then I can click and then it can slice and open apart. Very cool, right? One day it will be cheap and then maybe you can own, maybe later when you study physics, right, your notes is 3D. Then you can view your notes from different angle and rotate. We just need bigger computers. If we have them, when we have them. Okay. So if you're wondering, so the mark scheme itself, right? They only highlight the keywords. You should write better than the mark scheme because if you only memorize the keywords, you can't bring the story together. Then your explanation will sometimes make no sense. Lah. Then your examiner will be confusion. So for your benefit, I put this here. Lah. You can compare side by side. Lah. Okay. So if you want to look at the principles of CT scanning, this one is, this is so that anyone that writes anything that is related, they give marks already. X-rays are used. Okay, fine. The older mark schemes are more strict. Lah. Okay. And the section of an object is scanned. Okay. So X-ray of a slice a section is scanned at many different angles. Okay. And then the image of each section is 2D. Image of many sections combined, so successive slices, I guess, or section, no, is combined to give 3D image, can view and rotate from different angles. So whenever we write something in the notes, we always give you a little bit of extra in case the mark scheme becomes more strict. But this was the 2019 one. Nah. This is the easiest essay to write, TBH, compared to the rest in my opinion. Uh. And then the next one would be the voxel calculation. Voxels. So to talk about voxels, um, it's pretty straightforward. I'm only going to do the question. If you want to know why we do it this way, then go do pass here. I mean, go watch the video. Though. Okay deal with a voxel and how they ask questions. This is from ON17, paper 4-1, question 9. So 9A, they ask this, I think. I'm not sure. Okay, and then this one, they'll ask for part B. So this is CT scanning and we divide it into four voxel A, B, C, D. So we scan it in different direction, V1, V2, V3, V4. And then the sum is this one. The background count is 26. So things you need to know about the voxel is number one, you need to know what is background reading. Background reading is the sum of the detector reading in any direction. Let me show you what I mean. Ding, 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 ding. So you go back to your notes. Okay, there we go. If you add these two numbers, 8 plus 12 is 20. Detector reading, total detector reading is 20. 1 plus 10 plus 9, 20. 4 plus 16, 20. 7 plus 10 plus 3, 20. Everybody is 20. 1 plus 3 plus 7 plus 9 is also 20. So this background reading is the total reading in any direction. Okay, so we will subtract background reading, divide by number of rotation. Okay, boss. So subtract background reading. 47, I'm just going to write here, okay, 47 minus 26, then divide by 3. 44 minus 26, then divide by 3. 59 minus 26, then divide by 3. 32 minus 26, then divide by 3. Okay, so we are doing this 
repeatedly at different different angles. So we rotate three times. One, two, three rotation. So divided by three. I don't know. So I, as you write down the answer, I write down what you need to do. The summed detector reading we will minus background and then we will divide by 3 or divide by the number of rotation minus background then divide by number of rotation so this will be minus 26 and this will be divided by 3 okay well, so for all of these if you minus 26 and divide by 3 this is 7 this is 6 this is 11 This is two. So A is seven. Are you <laughs> by the way, uh, it was A B C D, okay? A B C D. Right here first. A B C D. So A is seven, B is eleven. C is two. Oh, they write for you in order, okay la. They are not trying to cheat your feelings. Seven, six, eleven, two. Three marks. I think wrong one minus one mark, if I'm not mistaken. Very nice one. Normally it's three to four marks for primary school calculation. Okay, so minus background, divide by number of rotation. If you want to know why, then watch the video. No? Remember? I mean, I started the review session number one. I said it's not the time to ask why. It's just what are the questions that they will ask me and how can I better prepare myself for answering questions around this topic. Okay, so that's it. We have finished your three types of medical imaging, starting from MRI, less popular, to ultrasound, most popular, to X-ray, meh, lah, sometimes will ask, sometimes will not ask. Okay, and I think uh, I will... Stop recording now, but I'm going to do a quick analysis on when was the last time each one came out for the past three sittings. All right, guys. So what you can see from this uh, table is the analysis of all the medical physics question from February, March 2016 to October, November 2020 right uh, the numbers is to indicate how many marks are being asked okay if let's say there's eight plus four meaning the both variants have asked mri for example so mri is not very popular but if it comes out right it could be up to eight marks and if you look at the most worded for your focus i think it will be ultrasound now. as you can see ultrasound is fairly popular x-ray is the second one and ct scan is occasionally so please don't use this to predict the future but use this to direct how many past year questions you should do for each section. Okay, and you also can see which past year question you can select and try. Alright, that's it. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.